I want us to understand not to underestimate the power of praise, the power of worship in our life. You know, I don't know what your need may be this morning, whether you're coming in heavy or you're coming in from, you know, a very, um, a very difficult week, or maybe you've had a good week. Whatever you're coming from, whatever ha is happening, God is wanting to minister to you. God is wanting to touch you. Amen. He wants to speak into your life, and he wants your faith to arise. Amen. And he wants you to draw closer to him. Look at someone on your right and left. Tell them, draw close to the Lord. Amen. Amen. We need to draw close to the Lord this morning. I praise God for the chance to speak his word. You know, I believe that the Lord has something for us this morning. You know, as so we started out this worship time, it just, I can feel God is just ministering. God is just working. And he's helping us to hear his voice. Listen and tell someone on your right and your left, hear the voice of the Lord. Hear the voice of the Lord this morning. I pray that you'll not hear my voice. You'll not, you'll not just hear the points. But the fact is, is that the Lord has been moving and working already, even throughout the worship time. I pray that you are not spectating through that whole time. I understand there are some times that it's like, what's going on? I don't understand. Why are they taking so long? Why are they singing more songs? Sometimes it feels like that sometimes. But let me tell you, when those moments are there, you just need to allow the Holy Spirit to minister to your heart. Sometimes you get too focused on like, I don't know this song again. <laughs> Hello? We're singing too many things. No. Listen. Everyone say listen. That all you that have ears, let them hear. Amen. We all have ears this morning. Amen. So listen to what the Lord is saying. I pray that as I share this word, it's just confirming in your heart what God is already saying to you. Our text this morning is James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. The title of my message this morning is Building the Character of Faith. Building the character of faith. This is now my sixth week in sharing this sermon series on building character. How many of you have felt that your characters are being built? Or being tested? All the more. The past few weeks. You know what is, is important? Because you know why, you're, you know why your, your character is being tested all the more? It's because God wants you to put into practice what you have heard. Come on, say it with me. Put into practice what you have heard. And now that I'm sharing this whole sermon series on building character, it's important that we know how to build character in faith. Building the character of faith in our life. God uses tests in our life. He uses tests to grow your character. He strengthens your faith by giving you these tests. As long as you're here on earth... You'll be, you'll be in constant growth and development. Why? So that you can become more like Jesus. Listen to me. There'll never be a point in your life where you'll say, I've made it. There'll never be a point in your life where you say, you know what? I'm mature now. No. You might be mature in age, but you have a birthday every year. So that means that you keep on maturing. Amen. You keep on growing. Amen. Amen. We're all still under development. Amen. And in this message, I'm going to be sharing to you how God tests our faith to build our character. James chapter 1, verses 2 to 4. Let's read it out together. One, two, three, go. Whenever troubles come your way, let it be an opportunity for joy. For when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. So let it grow. For when it is fully developed, you will be strong in character and ready for anything. Amen. How many of you want to be strong in character? And you want to be ready for anything? I don't want to be caught by surprise anymore. Are you hearing me? I don't want the enemy to catch me by surprise. I want to be ready when the devil comes. And when he comes in like a fraud, he can set up a standard against him. 
Let me tell you something. That's the point that we need to get to. But you only get to that place if you are strong in character. We need to be strong in character. We need to get to this place where you want, where you say, Lord, let this grow. Amen. But it, the first part is so important here. What does it say in the first part of the verse? Whenever troubles come your way. Are you ready for troubles? That's the question. I don't want troubles. Pastor Tim, I, you call me. Tell me, Pastor Tim, pray for me. I'm going through troubles right now. Hello? But whenever troubles come your way, let it be an opportunity for joy. Everyone say joy. You know why it's an opportunity for joy? What does the Bible say about joy? The joy of the Lord is, is your strength. That's why it is an opportunity for joy. You want strength in your trouble? Then be, be joyful. Hello, being joyful is not being happy. Are you hearing me? Being happy is an emotion. Joy is a character. Because you can rejoice even you're in pain. Even you're in a struggle. The joy is with you. So when it says, why does it, why does it say that you need to let that joy be an opportunity? You, you need an opportunity for joy in your life. is so that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. How many of you want to endure more? You want to be able to endure so that you can grow more. You know, there are, let, tell me if, this is, if I'm right or not. There have been moments in your life where you go through some things. And you feel like you can't make it. You've been in, how many of you have been in those points in your life? You feel like, man, this is, I think this is the one, this is it. This is the one that's going to take me out. But you know what? It was, it was painful. It was hard. It was difficult. But it gave you a chance to grow. It gave you, it, it made you stronger in Christ Jesus. Amen. And it helped tested your faith to build your character. Now I want to give you six ways that God tests your faith. By all means, these are not the only six ways. But I feel like these are like vital ways where God tests you so that you grow. None of us want to be tested. Who likes tests in this room? Of course, no one likes COVID tests, right? <laughs> but let me tell you, that's the one test you want to have negative. <laughs> but... I want you to understand there is tests in our life. And even though we don't like those tests, we need them. Everyone say they're necessary. They're necessary for what? For growth in faith and for building our character. The first test is a new task. Everyone say a new task. This first test that God brings you is where you ask the question, what, Lord? The fact is, in every test of our life, the one thing that we always ask God is why. Why, Lord? <laughs> in every test. Can you imagine if you're going to go sit for a test and you're saying, why? Why am I taking this test? You're asking the examiner, why? He's like, didn't you know what test you signed up for? Hello? But yet with God, with every test that he brings into our life, we're always asking him, why? But it's important that in every test of your life, you ask the right questions. Amen. So in this new task, in a new task in your life, you ask the Lord, what Lord? When God gives you a new task to do, when he gives you a new assignment, you need to ask, what Lord do you want me to do? What Lord is the next step? Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 7. Look what it says. It was by faith that Noah built an ark to save his family from the flood. He obeyed God who warned him about something that had never happened before. It is by, say it out loud. Say faith. It's by faith. He was given a task. He was given an assignment and not knowing what it was going to be used for. He'd never seen a boat before. 
He had never seen a river. He had never seen a lake. He had never seen an ocean. I want you to understand this. In that time, there was no lakes. There was no rivers. There was no ocean yet. And yet here he was. God tells him to build an ark. And he did it by faith. It was a test of his faith. A new task. But instead of saying, why am I building this? What? Why, why, why is this need necessary? No. He says, what Lord? It's a heart of obedience. Having a heart that, that will obey God no matter if you don't understand why he's telling you to do it. Hello? Faith is facing the future. Everyone say that out loud. Faith is facing the future without knowing what. Even if you don't know what. Are you still going to obey? You see, the thing with us is that we, when, we, when it comes to our relationship with God, we need more development in this area. Can someone say amen? amen? We need more development in this area. You're always asking God, Lord, show me first. Hello? Show me what first. Show me what to do. Show me what it is. Show me your plan. But God just says, no, just build the ark. Hello? What arcs need to be built in your life? Hello? What arcs is God asking you to build? Is, what arc is there that the Lord is telling you? You don't know why God is asking you to build it. You don't know what the reason is, but you just need to obey. Look at someone around you and tell them, obey. Obey. Faith is facing the future. Why are you facing the future in faith? Because you know God is with you. You can get through anything. You can get through whatever. You know that even though you don't know what's coming. Hello. Why do you think a lot of sidekicks and fortune tellers make a lot of money? Because people think they can tell them the future. You want to know the future? Go to God. But one thing I know about God is he doesn't always tell you what's ahead. But one thing he does tell you is I am with you. Let me tell you, I'd rather have someone with me to face the future than go the future and know the future and go it alone. I don't know what, but I step it in faith. I will do my assignment with God. Why? Because obedience is better than sacrifice. You want to obey God, even though you don't know what is ahead. Come on now. Faith is being sure. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 1. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. What task is God giving you? What assignment is the Lord telling you that you need to step out in? Let me tell you, let's get to this place where we say, yes, Lord, I will obey. Come on, someone raise your hands in this room and say, yes, Lord. I will obey. This is the step we need to take. This is where we need to go out and say, yes, Lord. I don't know. I don't know what's ahead. I don't see it, but it's okay. I know you're with me. Amen. Everyone say obey. The second test that God gives you is a major test, is a major change, I should say. The second test is a major change. So the first test is God gives you an assignment. The second test that God, that God does in our life is a major change. Where, Lord? Some of us, we don't like change. We like to be comfortable. Amen. You want to know what's coming up. You know, you want to know what the changes are going to be. Hello? Especially when you're doing something. Especially when there's going to be assignments in your life. You're going to say, tell me, Lord, what the changes are going to be. Where, where, where is it? Where? Where, Lord? Hebrews chapter 11, verses 8 to 10. Look what it says. It was by faith that Abraham, what? Obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him as his inheritance. Look at this last part. He went without knowing where he was going. 
Would you go where God tells you to go, even if you don't know where? Say, Lord, tell me first so I can know. So I know. Like if, we were, if I said to you, let's go on a mission trip. Let's go on a mission trip. Yeah. And, you got, and, and all of you want to go, right? But I say, the only thing is you don't know where we're going. You know, one thing I noticed, even when I was in Bible school, every summer they would take mission trips. We had mission trips to the Philippines. We had mission trips to China. They had mission trips to, uh, to South America. They had mission trips to Peru, to uh, uh, Guatemala, to Colombia. They had mission trips to all these different places. But one thing I noticed is that they loved the mission trips that were going to stay in hotels. Nobody wanted to stay like in the bush. Like the ones, the two least mission trips that were went, that went, that, that that had the least amount of people was Africa and Philippines. But all the other ones were Israel. Oh yeah, I wanna go there. I'm gonna go on a mission trip to Israel. Paris, London. They wanted to go there. Yeah, I wanna go on a mission trip there. Hello? But no one wanted to go. You know, because you know what, when you know where, that changes your perspective. It's like, where, where are we gonna stay? Oh, what are we gonna eat? Hello? You know when I signed up for the mission trip to the Philippines? I was thinking the same way. I was thinking, yes, Philippines, I'm going to go on that mission trip. Why? Because every time I went to Philippines, it was a vacation. It was a holiday, so I was thinking, yes, we're going to go to Philippines. This is going to be an easy mission trip. No, it wasn't. We were picking up 300, 300 kids in one jeepney every day. Literally, they're hanging on anywhere they can hang on. That's how it was in the middle of the province. We, we drive in there with a jeepney, and there are 10 seats inside for 300 kids. Okay, climb on anywhere. <laughs> on the roof, <laughs> on the side. We put another seat in the middle, wherever. And let me tell you, it was a hard mission trip. It wasn't easy. Every day. That's what we did. But you know what? I saw the change in the lives of these kids. That mission trip changed my life. I'm telling you. It changed me. Even though I didn't know what was ahead. Even though, you know, all of these things are in my life. Let me tell you, faith is following God's leading. That wherever, wherever the Lord will lead you, you say, God, I will follow. Are you ready for that? That's the question. Because this is, a, this is, we're talking about character here. Are you hearing me? We're talking about character. You see, we all want to follow God as long as it's convenient. Come on now. You all want to follow God as long as it's comfortable. But yet when it becomes difficult, when it becomes too hard, you say, I don't know about this, Lord. I'm not sure yet. But let me tell you, you need to get to this place where you say, Lord, where you lead, I will follow. I'm going to follow you without knowing where. Amen. Even if you don't know where, you're going to say, yes, Lord, I will follow. Come on, say it with me. I will follow. Amen. The third test is this, a delayed promise. When, Lord? Everyone say, when, Lord? I think this is the one that we all have a hard time with. The test where it's delayed. How many of you like delays? You don't like delays? Why do you ride airplanes? <laughs> Have you ever experienced a delay on the plane? You know the worst delay I ever went on on the airplane, I think, was 23 hours. It was at the airport for 23 hours in Gatwick Airport. It was horrible. I said, what a waste of time. Seemed like waste time. It seemed like, why didn't they just cancel the flight and tell us to go back? And they just said, no, just wait. They kept telling us two hours. No, two hours. No, another two hours. What? It was ridiculous. And yet, in our walk with God, that's our tendency. You put your prayer request down. Well, we don't have the prayer request box here anymore. 
Or you ask the Lord, Lord, I'm praying for this. When are you going to save my loved ones? When are you going to meet this need? When are you going to do this, Lord? But it's a delayed promise because God isn't giving it to you because you're not ready for it yet. God hasn't answered your prayer because your character is not there yet. Hello? Some of you are in a rush to say, God, give it to me, Lord. But in fact, your character is not ready for that gift. Your character is not ready for that promise. You need to wait on the promise of God. Everyone say, wait. Look at Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8 to 10. Again, it says, even after Abraham reached the, pro the land God promised him, he lived there by faith. Do you see this? For he was like a foreigner living in a tent and did so, uh, uh, and, and so did Isaac and Jacob, and uh, to whom God gave the same promise. Abraham did this because he was confidently looking forward to a city with an eternal foundation, a city designed and built by God. Do you see this? I want you to understand something. This is a temporary home, this place. Earth is a temporary place. Don't get your roots down too deep because we're not staying here. Amen. I want you to understand your, your mindset needs to be like Abraham. Yes, God gave him a promise, but he said, I'm going to stay in a tent so that whenever God tells me to go, I'm ready to go. Because if he built a house in that place, then he'll be like, Lord, I don't know. I already built a house here. I already built all these walls. I already have my family here. All my relatives are here. Hello? Does this sound familiar to you? I don't want to go, Lord. I don't want to go because, you know, all this I've already have here. Are you still excited for the coming of the Lord? Oh, let me tell you something. You're just saying, Lord, just wait, just wait, just wait until, Lord, my kids are grown up, you know. Then you can come. Just wait, Lord, until I'm married, Lord. <laughs> Hello? I want you to understand something. Sometimes there's a delay in the promise of God because your character needs to catch up with that promise. And you need to ask the Lord, Lord, I know that you will do it in my life. We keep asking, when? When, God? When? When, Lord? Instead of when, they say, Lord, do what needs to be done in me. Let my character catch up. Amen. Let my character be built up. Amen. I need to be living in a tent. Hello? Why do you live in a tent? Why, why do you think you lived in a tent? It's not permanent. The tent was temporary. Who, who decides to live in a tent? Nobody, really. Unless they have to, unless they're homeless or something, or they really want to live in a tent. But the fact is, is that most people that live in tents is because they don't plan to stay in one place very long. Are you hearing me? So I want you to understand this. He lived in a tent because he wanted to be ready. Why? Because he knew God gave him a promise. And this is what, look what it says in the second part. Abraham did this because he was what? Confidently looking to a city with eternal foundations do you see this he's saying that i'm not gonna i'm not gonna set up shop i'm not gonna stay here long because my the promise that i know god has given me are you hearing me is greater than this place hallelujah let me tell you something we need to get to this place faith the third one, faith is waiting for God's timing without knowing when. You're okay to wait for God's timing as long as you know how long. Hello? How many of you want to know how long? Come on, raise your hands. Be honest. You want to know how long? Okay. All you other good Christians that didn't raise your hands, it's okay. Faith is waiting for God's timing without knowing when. That means 
that you're willing to wait on the Lord. And let me tell you something. One thing that I know when it comes to waiting on the Lord, He will renew your strength. <laughs> You will rise up with wings like eagles. You will run and not grow weary. You will walk and not faint. This is what it does when you wait on the Lord. Faith is waiting for God's timing without knowing when. Look at someone on your right and your left and tell them, wait. Wait. You know what? Waiting helps you build your character. Amen. Obeying helps you build your character. Amen. Facing the future helps you build your character. All of these help you build your character, but it takes faith. Everyone say faith. The fourth test, an unsolvable problem. How many of you have ever been to an unsolvable problem? You've been to that island? Unsolvable problem island, you've been there? <laughs> I think a lot of us have been there already. <laughs> That's an island you don't want to be on. The Lord, take me out of here as soon as possible. Amen. Lord, rescue me. <laughs> An unsolvable problem. You faced a situation in your life where you don't see the end. Hello? You face a situation in your life where it seems like you just want to die. Hello? Just take me, Lord. Take me now. <laughs> Hello? You've been in that kind of situation before? Well, let me tell you something. You need to wait. You need to see. You need to expect. Everyone say expect. What are you expecting for? Expecting a miracle. When there is an unsolvable problem, what did, the Bible, what did it say in the beginning? The first verse we read, it said that you need to have what? You need to, it's an opportunity for joy. So that opportunity for joy means that you're waiting. Are you hearing me? You're, you're expecting to see a miracle. When there's a problem in your life that seems unsolvable, expect a miracle. Say it out loud. Expect a miracle. Look what it says, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11 and 12. It was by faith that Sarah, together with Abraham, was able to have a child, even though they were, read it out loud. All of you that say too old, say amen. <laughs> You're not too old. And Sarah was barren. Abraham believed, everyone say believed that God would keep his promise. And so a whole nation came from this one man, Abraham, who was too old to have any children. A nation with so many people that like the stars of the sky and the sands of the seashore, there is no way to count them. Here they are, Abraham is facing a situation with his wife, and guess what? It seems like unsolvable. God told him, I'm going to promise you, you're going to be the father of multitudes, the father of many nations, and yet you don't have any children. Yet your wife is barren. Hey, Lord, I'm too old, and my wife can't have any kids. Seems impossible. But with God, all things are possible. This is the place where you get to. That's why when there is an unsolvable problem in your life, faith, here's the fourth one, faith is expecting a miracle without knowing how. Listen to me. You don't need to know how. You just need to know when. I don't care how. God's going to get it done. Hello? If you were building a house, getting a house built, what would you rather prefer? So you know you have someone that's professional, someone that knows how to do everything and does everything well, and they tell you, look, I'm going to, I promise you, it's going to be good. And they have, they're reliable. 
They're going to do everything that's needed. Or you want to be there every day. How, how is this built? How are you going to put the cistern in there? How are you going to put the, the flush in there? How are you going to do? Are you, are you telling me? Are you hearing me? You want to know, do you want to know how everything? Do you want to know how the house is built? Do you want to know how the computer works? Do you want to buy? Before you buy your phone, are you like, how did they make it? Where was it made? In China? Where was it? Hello? You don't not concerned about the how. You just want it. Are you hearing me? You're not concerned about how, but yet with God, Lord, tell me how. Tell me how, Lord. How are you going to do it? How are you going to give me the miracle? How are you going to solve my problem? God says to you, I'm going to solve your problem. Don't worry about how. Just expect it. Look at, some, look at your neighbor and tell them, expect a miracle. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but this excites me. If there's some of you that are going through a situation this morning, God is, this, is encouraging you that he's going to give you a miracle. Just expect it. You need to expect a miracle. God is still moving. Amen. The fifth test. A senseless loss. There's a lot of people this past year that have experienced a loss. Very, very difficult loss. Some is with uh, their loved ones. Some is with their jobs. Some is with different things in their life. But I want to let you know this. That when there's something in your life that seems senseless. A senseless loss. God is still there. I want you to know something. God is still sovereign. Sometimes we don't understand why. But let me tell you, God has a purpose. Hebrews chapter 11, verses 17 to 18. Look what it says. Let's read it together. Go. It was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac a sacrifice when God was testing him. Abraham, who had received God's promises was ready to sacrifice his only son, Isaac, even though God had promised him, Isaac is the son through whom your descendants will be counted. Do you see this? I want you to understand something. How can it be that when you've, you've been waiting all this time for a miracle, it seemed like an unsolvable problem, then God solves it, he gives you a son. Then the next instruction after that, when your son has been grown with you and you've learned to love him and take care of him, then God says to you, sacrifice your son. And you're just like, what? What did you say? Wait, I don't know. I don't think I heard you right, Lord. <laughs> say it again. <laughs> what did you say? Hello? This doesn't make sense. You're going through a situation. This doesn't make sense. I don't understand. This is an unnecessary loss. Hello? Have you been in that situation where you're walking with God and then something, gets, something happens, a loss happens in your life and you're like, Lord, I don't understand. I'm a Christian. I'm walking with you. I love you. I'm going to church every week. Did I sin? Did I make a mistake? Hello? Why, Lord? Why, why are you letting this happen to me? Let me tell you, that's the point in your life where you realize that you're not as close to God as you thought. Because in these types of situations, here's the fifth one. Faith is trusting God's purpose. Faith is trusting God's purpose without knowing why. Faith is trusting God's purpose without knowing why. Listen to me. You might, you might not know the why, but know that you can trust God. Everyone say trust God. I want you to understand that you can trust the Lord in every situation of your life. In senseless situation, all the more. Trust the Lord. It doesn't make sense. But God has a purpose. 
I want you to encourage five people around you and look at them eyeball to eyeball and tell them God has a purpose. God has a purpose. You might not understand why, but God has a purpose. I know for a fact in my own life, there have been situations where I don't understand why. Why did I have to go the long way around? Hello? You ever ask that from the Lord? Lord, I could have gone this way. It would have been easier. But why did I have to go all this way just to get to the same place? Why is it, Lord, that I prayed for healing like that person and you did it like that for that person? And then for me, I had to go through all this and then just to get here. You ever think about that? Some people, you're like, you got delivered just like that? God healed you just like that? You know, it took, you know how long it took me before God healed? Hello? Senseless. But there was a purpose. Do you know why? Though sometimes God can do it. God does it in a second in some people's life. And it's wonderful. But ones that go through the process, listen, the ones that go through the grinder, until God brings that healing, God brings that deliverance, God does all of that. It doesn't just become a testimony, it becomes a message. And when that becomes a message, let me tell you, that multiplies thousands of old. It wasn't just like, thank God, God healed me in one second. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! That person, I now remember that five, ten years from now, but the person that went through the process, they never forget that journey. Because it becomes a message in their life. Are you hearing me? Faith is trusting God's purpose without knowing why. So you don't need to know why. Amen. Trust the Lord. Look at someone next to you. Tell them again. Trust the Lord. Number six. Are you still with me? Last one. A prolonged pain. You know, when I think of prolonged pain, I think of my dad, Pastor Ding. Always talking about his back. Oh, my back. My dad, that prolonged pain. Every day we're praying for Pastor Ding. Hello? In the dawn watch. Lord, heal prolonged pain. <laughs> Hello? Maybe for some of you, it might not even be a physical pain. It might be an emotional pain. It might be a mental pain. Hello? How long, Lord? Hebrews chapter 11, verses 24 to 26. Look what this says. By faith, Moses, when he had grown up, refused to be known as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. He chose to be mistreated along with the people of God rather than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a short time. He regarded disgrace for the sake of Christ as of greater value than the treasures of Egypt because he was looking ahead to his reward. Amen. Let me tell you something. It's easier for you not to be Christian. It's easier for you not to walk with God. So you choosing to walk with God, you better be ready for some prolonged pain. <laughs> if you're if the kind of God that you believe in is well you know God's gonna give me this God's gonna give me abundance God's gonna give me wealth God's gonna do all this for me let me tell you that's not the kind of God that we serve you got to be willing to get through the fire too as you share in his glory you must also be willing to share in his suffering are you hearing me and let me tell you here in this in this story Moses who grew up, let me tell you, Egypt was the wealthiest country in the whole world in this point. They were ru ruling the world at this point. 
And here he was, he chooses not to be in debt. He chooses not to stay in riches. Are you hearing me? He chooses not to stay in fame, to be known as the son of the Pharaoh's daughter. He didn't stay in that identity because he said, you know what? My identity is greater than something that's temporary. My identity is in the eternal. My identity is in I am a child of God. I want you to get to this place that you would get there and that it says, look what it says. He chose to be mistreated. Who wants to choose that? You want to choose to be mistreated? Yet he chose that. Why? Because look, he, would cho he chose it because he wanted to be with the people of God. He wanted ident his identity to be in Christ. And he says he chose it rather than enjoying the pleasures of sin for a short time. Sometimes we would rather choose the temporary pleasure than the eternal gain. And I know we've been in that place. I know it's a lifetime process where we need to learn how to choose. Sometimes you're just saying, how long is this going to be, Lord? How long am I going to go through this pain? How long is this going to be? What if God doesn't choose to heal you in that point? What if God doesn't choose to answer your prayer the way that you want him to answer? Will you still walk with him? So, you know, I've tried. I tried being a Christian. I don't want to do that no more. God didn't do it. I blame the Lord. He didn't heal my brother. He didn't heal my sister. He didn't, he didn't answer my prayers. Hello? Then maybe you haven't really been walking with God. The fact is, is that the, 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 the test, these tests, which I call faith tests. Everyone say faith tests. These faith tests here, it helps us to learn how to use our faith in these situations. So in prolonged pain, here's the sixth one. Faith is continuing to persist without knowing how long. Everyone say persist. Say it out loud. Persist. Look at someone next to you and tell them as well. Persist. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what, how long your pain has been. But I want to encourage you this morning. Persist in faith. Because God is with you. You might not know how long. But let me tell you, God is at work. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 27. Look what it says. By faith, Moses left Egypt, not fearing the king's anger. He persevered. Everyone say that out loud. Persevered. Because he saw him who is in invisible. Are you at a place where you see God? That you see him more than your problem. You see God more than your situation. You see God more than the prolonged pain. Hello? You see God more than the senseless loss. You see God more than the being taken advantage of. Do you see God more than those things? The fact is, is that this is what we like to do. We like to glorify our troubles rather than glorifying God. And that's the mistake that we make. You need to flip that switch and you say, no, Lord, I'm going to glorify you in the midst of my trials. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see you no matter, no matter how hard this is going to be. My encouragement for you this morning is that you would be able to stand in faith, have a character of faith. Character of faith. That character of faith is knowing not just what to do in your situation. But is knowing where to go 
who to run to in your situation. Listen to me. I love helping you with your troubles. I love, you know, that you can call me and tell me what's going on in your life. But my encouragement to you, don't run to me. Run to Jesus. Now listen to me. I'm not telling you don't call me. If you can't make it on your own, I'm here to carry your burden so I can fulfill the law of Christ. But I want you to get to this understanding where you say, I want to see you, Jesus. You want to be like Moses. You want to be like Abraham. You want to be like these people in this text. Where you're not going to be afraid. Because you see him. Turn your eyes on the Lord. And let the Lord be your strength. Turn your eyes on the Lord. Let the Lord be your hope. Amen. So this morning, this is my encouragement to you. Ask the Lord to build that character of faith in your life. Come on, let's pray. Jesus, we run to you. We run to you, Jesus. Lord, as we have read Hebrews chapter 11, and we see these great men and women of faith, we come to an understanding, Lord, that we can run to you. Because you said it, Lord, in Hebrews chapter 12, that we must keep running the race that was set before us. Because you are the author and the finisher of our faith. So I pray, O oh God, Lord, that we would see that we can have a character of faith. Lord, build that in me. Build that in us in the name of Jesus. Come on, ask the Lord right now. Lord, build the character of faith in me. Lord, I thank you, Lord, that you're with us. Thank you, Lord, that we can have faith, that we can trust in you, that no matter what situations we're going through, you are there. No matter how hard, no matter how senseless, no matter how long we've been going through them, we can trust that you are there. Because you are sovereign, Lord. You can help us in every situation. So God, Lord, we surrender it all to you, Jesus. If that's you today and you feel that like you're going through, you're, you're carrying a heavy weight or you're carrying something, the Bible says that you should cast your cares upon the Lord because he cares for you. All you who are weary and are heavy laden, cast them to the Lord right now so that he will give you rest. Lord, we give it over to you, Jesus. Come on, you raise your hands up to the Lord and say, God, I give it over to you. I surrender it over to you, Jesus. Every weight, every sin, every trial, every hardship, we give it over to you, Jesus. Because you are sovereign, sovereign in our situations, Lord. Come on, just stand with me this morning. Just stand with me this morning and just say to the Lord, yes, God, I give it over to you, Jesus. I give it all to you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.